Well, it's been a while since I've dealt with a large piece of XPS foam for something. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. I got a big piece of styrofoam here. Well, XPS insulation foam. And I think I'm gonna need to use all of it. I wanna make some terrain for vertical climb scenarios. So my goal is to make something that looks decent, that you can play on vertically, do a climb, do combat on the side of a mountain, but they can also be broken up and used in other ways. I wanna also use it to maybe make valleys or like caves or just other things. I want three sides of these to be square with each other and the front faces to be that wavy cliff face. So I'm gonna cut these off and then cut these into strips. It's a mountain, I guess. Not very tall. I would like to have twice as much as this for a demonstration, because this is not very impressive. Why don't you just get more foam? Because I don't want to go get more foam today. The goal here is to make some wavy kind of stone faces, also kind of make areas that miniatures can stand on. I don't want to cut too much off. At least not on the bottom one. All right, there's some very basic stone. I'm just gonna create some spots for items and minis to stand on, but keep it fairly sheer. Give these layers a little bit of texture individually before I glue them together, because later it's gonna be pretty hard to reach into some of the crevices. Got some nice cracks in there. Bigger piece of broken limestone should be a little bit easier. I'm going the smashy smashy route instead of say carving with a knife and chipping and wire brushing because it doesn't create any mess. <laughs> I don't feel like having a ton of mess in here right now. Plus this gives a really different, pretty natural look. Oh, get out the aggression. That was actually quite hard on hands. Now I can start gluing these together. Hot glue is not gonna cut it because I can't hot glue this big of a surface and get it in time before it cools down. So I'm going to use some construction adhesive, in this case, PL Premium, but there's lots of brands you can use. However, this doesn't set up right away, so I gotta use a combination of both. Basically, the hot glue is gonna tack it in place now, and over the next couple hours, this stuff will set up and it's gonna make it really, really strong. Hopefully I can unclog this tube. Come on, baby. This one's too clogged. Hold up, wait a minute. All right, I got a fresh tube of construction adhesive from a different company, and I don't feel like getting it all over my hands. Flip it, start like this, and go to town. I think I just wanna put a couple dabs and then get this 
want to move it around a bit to compress that adhesive. I've never used this particular construction adhesive for this kind of purpose. So I don't know if it expands a little bit when it dries or cures. I hope not. I don't want these getting pushed apart. And I'm a big old unhealthy nerd. So I don't have weights that can weigh this down, but I do have nerd books. Okay, perfect. I also saved some of the bigger offcuts so I could make one more level at the top to raise things up. This glue gun is actually too hot for these little pieces. Uh, it's just melting the foam. So I'm gonna use my old school little guy. Old Faithful has never broken in many years, even after giving it to my kid. But now I gotta wait for it to warm up. What are you up to? Yeah, hope your day is going good. Are you hot yet? <laughs> Since my glue gun is still warming up, let's talk about the chilling new set from Arch Villain Games. If you're gonna build a snowy mountain terrain set to run encounters on, you're gonna need some appropriate models. And the December theme from Arch Villain has you covered. This set contains a ton of amazing wintry Arctic themed foes for your players to face off against in an epic icy battle. Looking at this set, I instantly think of some Northern themed Dungeons and Dragons campaigns, but they also make me think of the snow covered city of Felstad from Frostgrave. Whatever winter themed game you're playing, there's gonna be plenty of cool usable models from this month's set. And it only costs 10 bucks a month to get all these models, which is a crazy good deal. You can always buy Arch Villain's previous sets from my mini factory, but the best bargain is to sign up for their monthly Patreon releases. The models all come pre-supported so you can print them easily at home on a resin printer. Print as many as you want to create that epic winter battle. Arch Villain's models always print well for me, despite the fact that they might be the most detailed models of all the companies I print. Frostburn Horrors Tooth and Tusk is a killer set. I'll put a link in the video description so you can go grab it for yourself. Now is that hot glue gun warmed up yet? Hey, Mr. Terrain Man, glue some foam for me. Flush up the back, lay it down, push it together. Please don't run out of glue stick part way through this important line. Uh, 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 uh. Gonna give it some weight at the bottom and make sure it's really stuck together. Some good old deck screws. One of my favorite foam building tricks. It's amazing how well those screws bite into the foam. Oh, I need lunch. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea if these sat for a while longer, but... Patience is a virtue that I do not possess. As long as they're not falling apart, should be good. They're actually a lot heftier than I thought they would be. It's pretty good. Now I wanna coat these in something that's gonna stiffen them up a bit, protect them. I don't wanna just use Mod Podge, so I'm gonna mix up a coat of really durable coating. I've shown this a few times before. It's basically a mixture of uh, white acrylic latex caulking, PVA glue, some water to thin it, and some black paint, just so that it's, it's not stark white. Almost forgot. One of the things that makes this mix really strong is having some sand or aggregate or something like that in it. I'm just gonna use some baking soda because I don't want big chunky rocks. All right, we got a little water on the bottom and a whole bunch of this. This is not a science. Mix stuff together. Don't worry about it. Glue. Baking soda. Don't overthink this. Just mix these things together. It's 
quite an enjoyable process applying this. I'm just gonna do some craft paints. That blue looks pretty strong and prominent right now, but I think it's gonna be really subdued as this piece progresses. Starting to look like a mountain. I know some people don't like that I use an airbrush a lot and inks for painting. The reality is it looks so much better. <laughs> This is looking fine. It'll be perfectly fine in a game. No one's gonna complain, but it would look a lot nicer had I done all the highlights and everything with an airbrush. together. oil wash is dry and it helped a lot. It, this thing's actually looking pretty good. Snow flocking, gloss Mod Podge, mixing cup, and fancy old popsicle stick. I don't wanna have too much of this. I don't wanna make any big mounds that make this any less playable than it already is. But I can use it in some of the corners, kind of hide some things I wanna hide, and then I can just sort of spread it out like this. And then when this dries, it'll just look like a light dusting of wet, icy snow. And that's why I use the Gloss Mod Podge. Oh shoot, oh boy. I should have remembered that these are so separate pieces. Ugh. Well. All right, that's one of them. I'm gonna do the other two and hope for the best. It worked and it looks awesome. I am hella thrilled with how this came out. It's playable, like it's actually practical for gaming. You can put minis on it. It's durable, you can throw it around. It's not too fragile and it looks decent. You know, I can make another set of these even without the snow and stack these on top of them and it could transition from lower level mountain to snowy peaks, which is super cool. One thing I might not have explained uh, while building it well enough is why I chose these this particular shape. The beauty of this shape is that it can be used in more ways than just mountains. You can make an awesome valley kind of crevice path. This is the sort of thing that is very common in D&D scenarios. How good is this? Use it in like a configuration like this. And then you have this sweet plateau or a really long layout. Look at this. They can stack up this way. It goes beautifully with these arch villain minis. I really like these goat dudes that I painted up kind of like Krampus. Perfect for a Christmassy adventure. Could even use it as miniature display. You know, put all your minis on it on the shelf. Look great. Oh, and of, of course, Wicked for Frostgrave. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. Let me know in the comments section below. If you want to pick up some tools or supplies for your own hobby needs and support me and the channel in the process, you can do that by doing your shopping on blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment page where I list and link to all the stuff I use regularly. The best way you can support this channel and help me keep making these videos is by joining the Black Magic Craft Patreon. I'd love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. Yeah, that's it for this one. I'll uh, see you next video. Cheers. So cool. Yeah, man. I like it.